And we're live. And we're in it. We're back and in we it. We are here. We're back in it. It's I'm been a... some weeks. <laughs> I'm in another different setup, as you can see. Uh, new room. I like how I like how can we get you in. Yeah, I like how it's just like you're in, in like consistently the stew, and I'm just like in different rooms throughout America. I like this. We should keep it going. We got to get you in the Oval Office. There's gonna be a vacancy pretty soon. Yeah, you think there's a job opening? I think so. <laughs> I think you're great at what you did. At what I did, or do you think I current for president? Okay, let me ask you a question. Actually, actually, let's get into a it. Let's... Ask me something. Your president. What, okay. what what would you want to do? Like what what are your things you're running for? What are you running your campaign based off of? Oh god. That's a very detailed question. I've been thinking about this. I've been stewing on it. Give me your answer and then I'll see what I can copy. Oh out. god. Well, I don't know you'd better turn it around to me so fast. <laughs> well, okay, well let's finish the intro. What hour in your shift were you like, damn, I regret this decision? <laughs> 2.30. You guys being you and Ellie got me belligerently hammered. Welcome to Space Show, um, the twenty-something episode. I don't know. All the, all the, uh, you know, we had to I'm, take a I'm, break just because well, like life got busy. And I'm also in the middle of like editing an episode right now because, well, th did I tell you that like the whole point of that episode was that like I wanted to just like give you a week off and just like upload that regularly without like you knowing, but really, uh, yeah, because like well you do you pretty much do everything. You, like, edit it, all this stuff uh, pretty much yourself other than, like, my end when we do remote podcasting. So I'm like, well, it'd be nice to give you a week off, but uh, here we are, like, three weeks later after recording it, and I still haven't uploaded it. Well, that day I was waiting. I'm like, all right, I want to just hit up Danny in a bit, and then we can record. <laughs> so I was, like, kind of preparing myself, and then all of a sudden I got a text. No, don't worry about it. I'm recording with uh, Danny Mac. I'm like, oh, all <laughs> right. And I didn't know what to do with myself that night. I was just kind of sitting there, like, uh. Yeah, do you uh, remember... Do you remember that, um, uh, I think, I, I think I was in high school still and he was in college, but I gave him like a, a clock that you, you can build like a Da Vinci clock. I uh, know, I believe I, it. I don't remember. I don't know if I ever sure. told you about it, but yeah, I, I just got it off Amazon and I had, and I bought it for him for Christmas, I think. And it took us like five years to put it together and we lived together. <laughs> That's stuck for, yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys <laughs> did live together. And we never put it together. And we never found the time to put it together. So what, you guys just like opened it up and like built it on recording? Yeah, we uh, we opened the o open scene. We're sitting okay. in the jungle that is Danny's room. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Among the plants. I'm macheting my way down to Danny McLean and I, and I say, hi, how are you? <laughs> I, I get my way to Danny Mac and we have a show. No, like we, we talked for uh, about like 20 minutes and then we're like okay let's build this damn clock mm -hmm. and then right. that was like it ended up being like an hour and a half building the clock and then Jesus. Danny McLean's like well I want to show you this cool IR camera that I have and then mm -hmm. we're like well we can be the first podcast in only infrared spectra Oh. <laughs> so, so then we filmed like a 20 minute bit just an IR <laughs> so it's a lot of editing and it, it's like two hours long, and, and not all of the, the footage is usable. All right, okay, I so respect I, it. it. It's like, I have to like actually edit it. It's not just splicing clips together. Like this, this usually for our is. Patreon only fans. Our on this is for our only fans. That's borderline uh, Black Hole Edition, because I kind of got hammered. <laughs> he was just yeah. feeding you beers? Yeah, he had uh, stopped at the county market and got picked up some, some craft beers. And some wine, actually. Speaking of yeah. craft beers, I am drinking Candy Crushable from 18th Street Brewery. Is that, like, local? 
Uh, I believe it's in Chicago. Nope, it is in know. Hammond, Indiana. Very wrong. wrong. Hammond's not that far. My phone's blowing tastes. up. Great. Yeah. Hi. Right, well, give me some. Uh, give me some notes on the flavor. Uh, C sharp. <laughs> e flat. It's a nice uh, fourth, I think. <laughs> Definitely at A four forty. May four forty. Uh, for those of you listening at home, you can go ahead and uh, pitch match that note, and it'll be correct. 100% correct, all the time. Yeah, I have perfect pitch. Hey, actually, do you know anybody who has perfect pitch? Actually, I, speaking of which... I don't have perfect pitch, for the record. Um, I wish I did. Viv and I are concluding that her nephew might have perfect pitch. Her three-year-old nephew? Yeah. He actually might be four. Why is this? Oh, he, oh he's, he's four now. Four. Yeah, he's coming up in the world. Up. I was on the phone <laughs> with him, like, you getting a job yet? You gotta make some money. <laughs> Um, you gotta support this damn house. We just kind of noticed, like, over the years that the moment he hears, like, a melody or, like, a tune, he can, like, recite it pretty accurately in pitch after the song's over. Like, one song, mm-hmm. one listen, and then afterwards he's like, the pitches are moderately close. Like, I couldn't do that. Yeah, no, that's, like, something... Well, first of all, that that could also just be, like, raw talent. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, maybe it, it, it could evolve into perfect pitch, but, like, some of the people I know with, like, perfect pitch is, like, pretty ridiculous. So, one of the dudes uh, on the drum line, he's an old alumni on the drum line, he uh, wrote an arrangement of Feels Like Summer by Childish Gambino in, like, 30 minutes. Oh, wow. For, uh, for, um, for the alt guild chimes, you know, like, that old-looking building on campus with, like, mm-hmm. the, 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 the bells in it. Oh, yeah, it's that building's hundredth. An- yeah, it had it had its hundredth anniversary, and so for that they put out it was like a contest for who could make like the best uh, arrangement of a song on the chimes, and the winner will get it like played on the bells like for okay. all the entire campus to hear, and there were like students entering, like music professors entering, like townies entering in it, like a lot of it was a pretty legit contest, and some kid on the drum line who's like not even like really he's not even on the drum line anymore he's like just he's a couple years graduated um he just submitted this thing of feels like summer that he made in 30 minutes on a whim and he won <laughs> really? because he has perfect pitch yeah that that was the whole point is that he has perfect oh, wow. pitch and that's why like he was just able to write it so fast and like i've been trying to write um like transpositions of certain songs like on marimba and it just takes forever because i am awful at hearing pitch you're just, just like going up just, and down the keys just like uh it matched that one yeah yeah like i, mean, I, I, I like electric bass that's how i used to like figure out songs you'd be like all right is it close to this a little uh higher okay it's closer to this and that's just like how i yeah. figure it out yeah actually it's funny you say that I, I, i'm actually trying to learn to play guitar and i'm starting to more seriously teach myself to play guitar and um how i learn songs is uh by ear on guitar is i can do it sort of like by note by note on guitar, mm-hmm. I find it way easier than on marimba or piano, say, for some reason. I don't know what it is. It's well, because it's all about hand positions for guitar, too. Like, you're not mm-hmm. moving up and down the um, board too often. It's just like, all right, my hand's chilling over these four frets. Let me just... Yeah, it's like, out. it's more more chords, whereas, like, uh, marimba or piano, the keys are laid out in such a way that you need to know exactly what keys you're hitting Yeah. to... Uh, in order to make it sound good on guitar, I can you can BS it pretty easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just gotta know the shape of the chord. A four forty. Well, yeah. that about does it for Space Show. Thanks for listening. We'll be back in another two months. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, my weeks got so busy as soon as we stopped recording for that little bit. Yeah. Just between like school and work, I just I, I had no free time. I worked a sixteen hour shift the other day. Oh yeah, because you like worked. You worked first. You worked that eight-hour shift, which was planned, right? Yes, my eight-hour shift and that then, I was scheduled for, and then and then the charge and manager, Clint that. supervisor, she uh, just approached me and said, "Hey, we're kind of because the hospital is very short-staffed right now because of COVID. If uh, if someone that you live with contracts it and tests positive, you're required to isolate as well, or people are just catching it because I mean 
people are coming to the hospital with COVID and the rapid test is only like, I don't know, 90% accurate, which is still nice, Yeah. but there's still that chance. Yeah. So we kicked out our visitors again and um, we're required to wear eye protection. So I bought some goggles that I wear in every, every room now. Yeah, I think there's like um, another like spike happening in, in all the cities because Chicago and St. Louis, all the restaurants and stuff mm-hmm. are closed down. And I know my, my brother's hospital, they didn't allow visitors. They stopped allowing visitors again. Yeah, I think our region is like 14% positivity rate and everything's supposed to be closed, but nothing's closing, which is really annoying. Like you go to any restaurant, you can eat indoors. I'll go to like the breweries. I, I sit outside and even though there's like 15 people inside, I'm like, no, like you're making my job so much harder. Yeah. But back to my 16 hour shift. Yeah, I just worked my first eight and then um, I liked the two nurses I was with. So I just kind of, when the opportunity was thrown out at me, like, hey, do you want to like work another eight? And like keep your people I'm like yeah mm-hmm. why not because then they threw time and a half on top of overtime on top of a night shift differential hey time and a half that, just like just because it's yeah so i was making some dough um and my initial shift three to eleven is probably the hardest not hardest but like out of the span i worked the hardest yeah because 11 p.m to 7 a.m people are asleep it was yeah, more yeah. about me trying to stay awake <sighs> Yeah. God damn, did I do it? Sorry, you're cutting in and out. No worries. Um, yeah. After my first date, they sent me the offer. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll stay. And then around 7 a.m., like, this sucks. I want to go home. I want to sleep. What hour in your shift were you like, damn, I regret this decision? (laughs) 2.30. Oh, dentist every time. 100%. Yes, because nothing is going on. They offered for me to be a sitter. And what a sitter is, is uh, if someone has some psychiatric um, uh, history or um, intention of suicide, you, there's someone that is required to be in that room at all times, just in case, because you never know. Um, so they offered, like, hey, do you want to be a sitter for the next eight hours? And I said no, because if I sit in one spot and stare at someone for eight hours, I'm going to fall asleep. That really sounds awful. And that's more dangerous for them. It's not yeah. bad if it's during the day. Like, if I show up and they say you're a sitter, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I, I can sit for eight hours and still get paid. Because I still get paid the same amount. Yeah. But, like, to put that on top of the eight hours I just worked, like, I can't do that. I'm going to pass out. Yeah. No one's going to be watching them. Yeah. So, and then, like, what did you what did, sleep. Yeah, like, what, what did you do for the rest of the shift? Um. Well, one of the nurses bought pizza, which was really cool. Ah. Because it was back and forth if I was staying or not because they wanted me to be a sitter, but then they didn't. And it was just like, we didn't know what the, the hospital needed. But then once we found out I was staying where I was, and one of the nurses was like, all right, let's order some pizza. We did that. I got a coffee with two shots of espresso. <laughs> and then we just had a good time. We listened to some Christmas music, some Mariah Carey. And then I was introduced to uh, Dominic the Italian Christmas donkey. Wait. Well, okay, no, hold on. Rewind. Why are you listening to Christmas music already? Because it's Christmas. It's... <laughs> what day is it right now? Uh, Christmas the 9th. November the 9th. Yeah, it's not Christmas. Well, how do you celebrate Thanksgiving? With food. Thanksgiving carols. I was snooping through our cabinets and I found um, a little Christmas tree for the hospital. I'm like, all right, this is going out on the table now. And no one's questioned you, it, so it's officially Christmas. You are single handedly ruining the integrity of that hospital. <laughs> Putting your damn Green. balsam furs on the table. <laughs> kind of lit. Your damn Douglas fur. I don't want your damn Christmas spirit until after I've had my Thanksgiving dinner. I have a serious issue about this. Uh, the hospital's giving me a whole ass turkey for free just for working there. Ass turkey? Yeah, just the butt of a turkey. <laughs> That's kind of rude. And I'm like, come on, what about the rest of it? <laughs> come on. But okay. Uh, Why, so you're, how are you not tired of Christmas carols, though? <laughs> like, year after year? Oh, I definitely like, get how are you tired, not tired? Of them, eventually. Like, by okay, so Christmas, why, I why, hate the idea. Why of it. start so early? Why start so early then? <laughs> because Why, nice you could you could actually enjoy them around Christmas time. You ever think about that? Nah, no, that's not an option. If you if you just you know portion it throughout the Christmas season, you know. What have I been known this to week? Portion? This week's Mariah Carey. Next week's Jackson Five. Next Jackson week Five is had a Christmas song. I don't know. I was just kind of spitting some words there. All right, all I right. bet they had a Christmas song. 
Do you consider Mean Girls a Christmas movie? I never thought about it, but I guess it could be a Christmas movie. Because mm-hmm. people consider Die Hard a Christmas movie, which I've never seen and also don't understand. <laughs> you know, Silver Snape's in that movie. Alan Rickman. with the snakes on the plane, right? Al- no, <laughs> Alan Rickman. <laughs> Alan Rickman's, died. The ba- Alan Rickman's the bad guy in Die Hard. Did you know that? I didn't. I know so. He I looks, know the least amount of Die Hard. He looks weird. You, you'd actually like Die Hard, I feel like, because it's a, it's a really nice Christmas movie. Oh, okay, okay. I'll give he's, it just a shot. A, he's just a normal guy that takes down the supervillain on Christmas. <laughs> Nothing like Does Samuel it take Jackson. place during like the winter? Like it takes place on Christmas? Is that why it's considered one? Yeah, that's literally it. <laughs> All right, never knew that. Hey, but you know, what's your favorite Thanksgiving time movie? Oh, I can only name one. What is it? Don't don't say the wrong answer. Isn't there a Charlie Brown like Thanksgiving movie? Oh yeah, there is. There's also they have one for every holiday. I feel like. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's unfair. Like that, you could say like, well, my favorite Thanksgiving media is Family Guy Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. My favorite song is Theme from Family Guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you ever seen Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, though? I saw commercials when I was, like, five. Dude, actually, one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. <laughs> Something about, like, that era of movies, like, comedy movies. Like, you know, also Airplane. And also, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I fucking hated Monty Python. Okay, I didn't hate it. I, it was a funny movie when you think about it, but I was just in a bad headspace when you showed it to me. It just wasn't what you were expecting, I think. No, because that was right after we did a drinking game for The Room, right? Yeah. And you guys, you, you guys being you and Ellie got me belligerently hammered. That's also just the nature of the room drinking game. <laughs> like, it was every time Johnny laughs. Dude, the guy laughs every five seconds. Uh-huh. Ellie's like, oh, I made you a mixed drink. Like, oh my god, I'm hammered. And every like, time, let's watch Monty Python. Yo, guys will love this movie. And you guys were just, like, kind of shitting on me the whole time. Dude. <laughs> showing you that movie. I was so pissed off at the end of the movie. Is it spoilers? Like, because the movie's been out for, like, what, 40 years? Yeah, no, it's not spoilers. When the cops showed up and arrested everyone, I was so pissed off because I was looking forward to this goddamn battle scene. I'm like, this For, is what it's been yeah. leading up to. This is the yeah, climax con- of the movie. <laughs> for context, it's a, it's a like a Middle Ages movie about the Knights of the Round Table, and they're yeah, all yeah, and like then there's a police officer find... in a, co- a car. Yeah, the, the, during one scene in the movie, like one of the knights just like randomly chops a dude's heads off, like like in a drive-by, like or as he's on a horse, and like throughout the movie, the cops, like normal like modern day like cops, are like in trying to investigate the knight's trail, and like at the very end, just a bunch of cops just come in and arrest like these knights and put them in police cars, even though it's supposed to be so taking, mad, supposed to be taking place during the Middle Ages. <laughs> Because, oh, like, there's so five minutes of dialogue between, like, these knights that have been traveling the entire movie and, like, this dude in a castle, and, and they're, like, ready to fight. And then they say charge, and then, like, a cop car comes rolling in and arrests everyone. <laughs> so, like, at the moment that you probably are looking forward to. Yeah, I know. That was, like, the one thing you were hype about. It's like, I'm only staying for the battle scene. <laughs> yeah, and then it didn't happen. Oh, I was pissed. Well, it's even better because... I told you why like they had to end the movie like that, right? Yeah, it's pretty funny, honestly. They ran out of money. <laughs> That's they pretty couldn't. good. They had to end that the movie right then and there. And they're like, how else could we do it? Oh, oh man. Classic. You ever, you've never seen any other Monty Python? No. I'm aware that they're like good and that I should, yeah. but I just haven't. Yeah, there's some on Netflix. Life of Brian's pretty funny. There's another one where they're like... Uh, Life of Brian is supposed to be like parodying parodying bible uh parables and right. instead of it being about jesus it's about this guy named brian and he's the savior <laughs> isn't that pretty much the story of scientology no not a, not at all because it was just created by a dude like the guy had a driver's license no like that they, they the guy who hold on let me reset my camera the guy who uh like founded Scientology is not like he's not there 
savior. He's not their messiah. He he, oh, okay. he just okay. wrote the books. Okay. Yeah. Which are also fiction. Can be found in the fiction section of Barnes and Noble. <laughs> so I'm um, actually I'm actually hold on, let's get into this because I'm actually I I know a lot about Scientology. <laughs> because uh, I'm Ali and I are in the middle of watching uh this series on netflix about celebrities who've escaped from like scientology and like what they say about it i saw that on uh netflix i haven't watched it yet but i've i I saw it i've been looking at it it's pretty pretty good actually and some of the stuff they do is like kind of not so they kidnap people like the guy who's like the head scientologist right now he's like overseer his wife hasn't been seen publicly publicly for 15 years and nobody knows where she's at jesus and like her f- people who she was friends with like have reported her missing to the police and because the scientology like the scientologists are like just so deep within the police department of LA nothing is like looked into nothing is investigated they can pretty much do whatever they can keep pretty operating up. yeah and they also have like they have the sea org you know what that is it's this big boat <laughs> Like a giant... I, I know the C word. Science, like a giant multi-billion dollar cruise ship that they like... It's like a religious retreat. It's like traveling to Mecca if you're a... Uh, uh, okay. If you're okay. a Muslim. I believe. Um, my biggest source of Scientology comes from a South Park episode. But to be fair, it is all like very accurate. No, I would buy that because that region in like out west there is like a lot of weird religions there's like uh what else is there there's um mormons that's what i'm thinking of Mm -hmm. and like the entire time they're explaining the story of like what scientologists believe because it wasn't really publicly known back then no they just had like a big text bar that said like this is 100 percent accurate to what they believe (laughs) it's just so out there it's really it's really like crazy like they they, they, not to like it's like aliens um not to make uh, one religion sound dumber no, Scientology's well, dumb. Ancient Lauren Zenu <laughs> ain't coming back for you. Yeah, no, Scientology's a sham. And they have, like, inside, like, these uh, Scientology, like, centers, these buildings around the world, they do, like, um, I forget what it's called, but there's, like, tests that they do where, like, you grab onto, like, these bars, and it, like, supposedly, like, reads your soul. And, like... Oh, it's not called a personality test. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I, I forget what it's called or what exactly yeah. it is. And then, like, the like, only way to, like, get the number higher or lower, whichever one's the better one, like, you have to pay into the church to, that's, to yeah, be at the different tiers. That's how you get up in the church. Yeah, you just pay ridiculous amounts of money. And, like, in that show that I was telling you about on Netflix, these celebrities are talking about how they're, they're like, yeah, I was, like, only a tier four member, and, like, I paid already, like, six digits into the church, seven oh digits into the church. Yeah. Uh, going back to a previous conversation of what is one thing I would do if I was a president of what am I running? I would definitely try to make a bigger gap between church and state. That's good. I think, yeah. I, mean, dude, I don't like, I don't know, religion is pretty, like, I'm pretty laissez-faire about, but, like, when you get, like, people like Joel Osteen. Good word choice. Good word choice. Laissez-faire. Yeah, I know what that means. Okay, do, do word. actually? Okay. Yeah, kind of, like, uh, stand by and, like, don't do much about it. Yeah. I think it translates to hands off. Yes. But, um, yeah, like, I, I don't like uh, the idea of people like Joel Osteen making, like, millions of dollars off their church, mm-hmm. like, because they, they are tax-exempt, because yeah, of I've stuff like really that. Yeah, I've never really fully understood that. I don't think you should be able to make money off your church. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think churches should be non-profit. I think, like, you should have a, not a salary, you should be, like, comfortable in a sense, like, not worrying about if you're going to eat tomorrow. Yeah. But you shouldn't be, like, driving the hot new lambo yeah there's no reason like he needs to his church needs to be like literally the old football stadium in Mm -hmm. whatever city he's in dallas like literally story yeah so recently i'm in a religion class uh intro to theology just because um it's a prereq for the university i'm at and it's all online there was a assignment that was discussed three types of theologies so I'm like, okay, let me type in what Google is a theology. And like, it was just giving me back religions. So it's like, okay, and then one has to be like super unique to you so no one can take it. Chaboy wrote about the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. 
And that's not what the assignment was. Turns out theologies and religions are very different. So he replied back to me saying, this is wrong. I'll let you redo it, though. <laughs> Only you. I know. I'm like, I, if I was the professor and I saw a kid writing about the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, that kid fails. He gets no more points, ever. Yeah, like, um, the Pastafarians, right? Yeah, the Pastafarians. Because, yeah, uh, man. Yeah, no, in high school, like, there was, the, the reason I know about Scientology so much is because in high school, one of my theology courses, we had to pick a religion and present uh, to the class about it, and I did Scientology, yeah. but somebody else in my class did Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. We did Sikhism, and we yeah, trusted like, one guy to record, or to edit it all, and he didn't show it to us until he showed it to the class. Uh, it, it was kind of rough. Yeah, I bet. Well, it was usually how it goes. It was weird. Usually have like theology. a bunch of um, people who believe in Sikhism. I don't know Sikhs. I guess is that what they're yeah, called? Yeah, they're Sikhs. And it was like them dancing, but then there was like hip hop music over it. And I'm like, this seems insensitive. <laughs> but uh, you didn't make it, so you can't you can't take the blame. exactly. That's really funny. I read a story about this one time where um, this guy tried to make a church in his garage, like uh, a Star Wars religion in his garage so that he could uh not pay taxes and then he got like audited by the government <laughs> okay but i could see that like kind of actually working because like one the bible's already translated to klingon two <laughs> there's something inherently religious about star wars and the force yeah yeah i think he actually tried to make a like a, a religion out of like the force and stuff but like he did it in his garage. Like the life around us, all inter- like life is connected and stuff. Yeah, he did, but and he did it in his garage from the Bible. Just to get, well, yeah, you, you have to be an idiot not to see that. Darth Vader is Jesus. Yeah, idiot. Han Solo is yeah, remember Jesus. When, remember when Jesus burned in lava and came back in a sweet ass suit? Remember when Jesus got frozen in carbonite? That was my favorite part of Leviticus. <laughs> Oh, Catholic school humor. Yeah, if you're not if you're not Catholic, you don't get this. Hey, actually, Ellie and I went to church on Sunday. Did you believe that? I'm sorry, dude. No, guess what I saw? What'd you see? Father Merck. Did you really? Yeah, remember he's like the. Priest oh, you were in church. town for some reason. I thought you were like down by her and went to church. Well, I am now. I'm down by her now. <laughs> but yeah. Um. How did you talk to him? How was he? No, like because of fucking COVID, everything. Yeah, how does church work now with COVID? You have to reserve a spot in first of all before you go because like they can only take an, a limited number of people, and you can only sit with the people you show up with. Everybody is socially distant, wearing masks the whole time. Um, for communion, hence everybody is wearing like the oh, what are they called? Who gives them out? The, the, oh, the, what what are their names? Eucharistic oh, ministers. Yes, Eucharistic ministers. They they run they put on face shields for that, and everyone has to do hand sanitizer before they go up. And yeah, uh, yeah like Father Merck usually does this thing after mass, uh, where he like stands at the uh, doorway of the church and like shakes everyone's hand as they leave. But obviously, that's not gonna that's never gonna be a thing again. And that's yeah. it honestly makes me very sad because he'd always give me a big hug. Um, I've heard somewhere that's supposed to be like a sense of more normalcy, like mid twenty twenty two. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like less masks. Bruh. Um, Can you imagine? But Biden just did go on uh some news network today and say that uh when we have a vaccine that it will be free to all Americans. Oh, speaking of vaccine, that's actually really good to hear. Um, mm-hmm. I'm resetting the camera. Okay. Are you going to talk about the 90%? Yeah, I was gonna, I was going to say that. That's actually like very, very good because uh, mm-hmm. that's almost competitive with other vaccines' effectiveness that we have now. Like, uh, I am very skeptical of the vaccine. Not saying that I'm like against vaccines, yeah. but I don't want to be a 
like a test guinea pig just because I'm a healthcare worker for like the first batch of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I get that to an extent, but at the same time, like I trust science. Like I no, I don't think the government's. I trust science, but I think we're, we're trying to rush a process right now because it, it is, does need to be rushed. We don't have a whole lot of time with this. I'm just not comfortable being some of the first people just because of the situation I'm in. Yeah. Because I've been exposed before and nothing came of it. I fully believe in the virus. I just, I think we need more testing on it before it's ready to go to the public. Yeah, but I mean, like, at the same, like, I do, I do see what you're saying, but, like, me being me, I, I feel like we got the country's best minds on it, and, like, although, like, it definitely would be beneficial to, like, have all the caution in the world, um, I, I, I think, like, for the most part, we know what we're doing in, in terms of that, yeah. like, it's just, uh, like, it, it, it's already, like, this process has, has been sped up, um, like light years just because of uh we're learning like so much more about it as we go and it's, it's not like we're like anything crazy like unexpected is gonna happen it's not like everyone who gets the vaccination like first is gonna immediately develop cancer or develop cancer and, and third arms down the line like down the years like i don't i don't think that's likely to happen i don't know what everyone's so scared of truthfully I feel like it, it, like the, the the like we like, are, in terms of like vaccinations and everything, it's pretty like solidified. I don't know what there is to be scared of, you know. Mhm. Like what 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 is like your concern? Like like I I, I wouldn't um, be the first in line, but like, why wouldn't you want to be? I the guess first? just like, I don't know how to phrase it. Not effectiveness, but like, so you know how like when you get the flu shot or whatever, like you're getting a part of the flu in you yeah so you can build antibodies yeah i guess i'm more worried at like how much of the coronavirus are we putting into each person and is it going to be like because we don't really know what kind of m- immune system you need in order to battle it sure. off you know yeah that makes sense so i guess that's my biggest worry but like if there is an aids vaccine would you take it well i don't have aids well, you don't have coronavirus, but that's why you take a vaccine is to not get it. You don't know that. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess you don't know me. <laughs> okay, fair, 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 fair. I don't want to. I don't want to push any buttons. <laughs> How dare but, like, you yeah. speak so ill of my, of my family in front of me, saying I don't have the virus? Oh, we're back. Hello. So, so I down. I downloaded this app recently. It's called Untapped, right? Okay. And it's like Facebook for beer. <laughs> what? And it's definitely been making me drink more. <laughs> Is this a good thing? Um, yeah. I'm beho- I'm trying to taste more beer, not like get hammered all the time. Oh, okay, that's it's, fair. You just like you drink a beer wherever mm-hmm. you go. You can log it on your like app. And yeah. then you, like, put the notes, like, oh, it was sweet, it was citrusy, um, kind of milky. You rate it out of one to five, and then you post it. And then your friends can react, and, like, it's called toasting is a like, and then you can comment on it. And, it's yeah, it cool. also shows you the breweries that are nearby. It has, like, a big list of beers. I think uh, I yeah, I've been... You should it's send, been making me want to try new beers. Send me that, send me that app. And I'll, I'll, send, you. I'll send you a similar app, uh, except it's with poop. Where it's called oh, God. Poop, poop Map, and you just log the locations of your poops and how, how they were, and your friends can like them and comment underneath your poops. All right, all right. It, Do you have this app already? Yeah, there was a thing uh, with all my roommates during the summer. And uh, once, I, once I got, once I claimed first place and was the first one to achieve 100 poops, uh, everyone kind of stopped. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. The glory was gone at that point? Yeah. It's like... I, I've won it all, but at what cost? Um, did I tell you about the Jordans I bought? Yeah, the the, the ones off the website. The yeah, website. the faux Jordans. Did they come yet? They they were supposedly shipped. When now, for those of come? you that are not Danny, <laughs> I have been looking at some Air Jordan ones. And uh, it's called the Origin. It's like a Spider-Man thing, but it looks like the Chicago 
colors like red white because of the chicago bulls and like those go for 800 to like a thousand dollars because they're popular while i was watching some youtube i found a comment that said i bought fake jordans from this website and there are people replying and saying oh yeah i know this works it took a couple weeks so i took a look at it and spent 150 dollars off a whim saying i hope these show up 150 dollars is a big whim Mm -hmm. it's like a, a hefty whim <laughs> and like the way to pay for it I'm like okay I'll just pay for, through PayPal that way they can't like get my bank account or anything it just gave me a oh. link to some guy's personal PayPal no he like in China <laughs> and he's like, so like okay. please, please uh, only to your friends and family no goods and services <laughs> but they've been giving me updates it shipped apparently Make sure he's not, like, tapping into your credit card or something. <laughs> oh, I made sure to take my credit card right off of uh, PayPal immediately. That's really funny. Mm -hmm. Best of so, luck, So, we shall see. Those are pretty sweet shoes, though. I'm a big fan of Jordan 1s. These are Nikes. Mm -hmm. I mean, those, they just uh, look fire. Those of you who don't know shoes. Nike sneakers. Watch the last dance, and you'll get it. Yeah. Oh, oh it's so sick balling in those fucking shoes. It's like, uh, you see... Um, these these are the same shoes. Go on. No, no, I don't even want to say it anymore. I was going to say, these are the same shoes that, um, if you ever, have ever seen, uh, Into the Spider-Verse, they're the same shoes that Miles Morales wears. Yeah. Very cool. They released with the movie, and that's why they were, like, kind of big. They're releasing another pair of shoes with, uh, the new Spider-Man game coming out on the 19th. Oh, really? They're releasing, um, Adidas Superstars. Mm -hmm. They're just, like, stock Adidas, like, low-top shoes. I think I'm going to buy, like, two pairs, one to wear, one to dead stock, and then just try selling it in a little bit when, like, Spider-Verse 2 comes out. You should buy three pairs, so that way you could just throw away the third pair. How big of a there flex would that be? There you go, I that? can just burn them. How big of a flex would that be? That's a pretty big flex. Like, I wouldn't mess with that guy. <laughs> He's burning his shoes he just bought. What the fuck? I wouldn't want to get on his bad side. <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot to buy the mead kit. You son of a bitch. Hey, if I bought the meat kit, would you want to make meat on the podcast? Yeah, it would, it would be a four-week-long episode. <laughs> well, because you're coming home in a couple weeks, right? We yeah. can just make it then, and then, I'll come and then back we can keep checking in on it. I'll come back for Christmas break, and it should be ready, right? Or Yeah, maybe before, there we go. Maybe before I leave. It. So get this, second semester, uh, I had have no spring break. Same. I have abbreviated spring break. I have like two days. No, I have no spring break. <laughs> Really, it's just you have school all the way through. Yeah, but the thing is, I, I my entirety of January, uh, ugh, my entire work, uh, my, uh, my entire month of January is off. So. Really, you don't yeah. start till February. Yes, sir, or the very end of January. I don't know the exact date, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's I know my, that's where that time went. At my school, we pushed off uh, starting school for another week, and then because this semester we had an abbreviated fall break, it was just like. A Tuesday and a Wednesday, which I already don't have class on those days, so it didn't affect yeah. me at all. We're doing the same thing for um, spring, but we're pushing the start of school a week back, mm -hmm. and then it's just an abbreviated spring break. Because, I mean, they don't want people going out, which I totally yeah. get. Yeah. And I'm really happy, because after Thanksgiving break, we're just all online, because you can't trust people to not bring, or not to go visit their family. Well, yeah, like, that's to be expected. But, um... I don't know, I forgot what I was going to say. So... If I got this mead kit, are we just doing like plain mead, or are no, we gonna like we should vary and stuff? Like, do we need to prepare? We should experiment. This? Okay. Like, for sure, we can. We can. We should grow, like herbs, like mint to put in it. <laughs> let's make everything. Okay. Let's grow. Let's plant a, a cherry tree and a juniper bush and maybe a couple fucking blackberry bushes, and we'll make mead with that. How about that? How about them apples? Oh, maybe apple mead too. Apple mead, okay. Yeah. All right, I'm placing an order for the kit right now. Are you buying it live on the show? Uh, I very am. Cool. There we go. All right. It says it'll come in November 11th, so in a couple days. And you should be home by then. I would love to make mead, actually. I've heard good things about mead. Mead is very alcoholic. Have you had mead? Um, I've had a mead before, and I think it was like 18%. <laughs> I think, uh, fun fact about mead, I think it was the first alcoholic beverage, like, uh, commercially consumed by people. 
like why why they drink. I believe it because it's not too hard to make. It's just honey and yeah, it's just fermented really. uh, that and or or fruit mm-hmm. and fruit. Yeah, I'm thinking we use some blueberries. Yeah, blueberries. Any sort of berry would be good in there. I'm thinking mint would be good. Apple could be good. Ooh, we're gonna have to figure out what flavor pro- flavor profile. So we could do we cinnamon. Want. This will be fun. Cinnamon. Oh. Cinnamon. Synonyms. Antonyms. All the names. <coughs> oh. <coughs> but yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I'm sure my COVID. <laughs> you heard it here first. Um, but yeah, back to school. Your boy starting clinical next oh, semester. Really? Oh hell yeah. Yeah, when we go into like hospitals, saying, "Hey, my name's Eddie. I'll be your uh, student nurse today." Hey. <laughs> so watch out if you're in the Chicago area and end up at a hospital <laughs> for some reason. I might walk. You're in the room. hospital area and dying. Uh, I might be your nurse. <laughs> hey, actually, that happened to me. You could, you too, could live my experience. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> You might have the joy of me walking in and saying, hey, I'll be around. If that happens, if, if Eddie's your nurse, make sure you make him put socks on your feet because he's really good at it. And I'm ask best. him to walk you around the, the hotel or the hotel hospital. The hotel. <laughs> Dude, actually, Shit. is very nice. And it, it did feel like a hotel. I'm bleeping that out. That hospital. Just the name. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to have some editing to do. Whatever, but yeah, no, it's a really cool hospital. I love. It does feel like a hotel. Like, it's very, like as a patient, it's very, very nice. Mm-hmm. The room service is pretty uh, decent. I heard the food's like very hit or miss. The tomato soup and grilled cheese. Some I got. people come in like, oh, I love it. <laughs> the tomato soup and grilled cheese yeah, is good. Yeah, I got. And it was it was decent. But it was like the first okay. food I. Because people always ask for recommendations, and I always say the salmon. Really? I've heard the salmon's killer at Why the didn't hospital. Why did you tell me that? Because you didn't ask. A friend, whatever. I'm over it. Oh, also, having gone through school, I could have tested to see if you had appendicitis now. Really? Yeah, tell me about it. What would you... Hmm? I know at least some tests that'll, like, tell... What, what would you, you have, have done? Or, like, if you have pain. Uh, the iliopsoas test. Yeah. You lay down. You, uh, lift one of your feet, or one of your legs. And I push down with a little bit of resistance, and you try pushing up. Hey, that... And if you have a lot of pain... Probably appendicitis. The doc did that to me. I remember him doing that to me. Yeah, did, did you have pain? A little bit, but it wasn't that bad. Ah. That's what I'm saying. Um, my appendix was, they said my appendix was inflamed like a little bit, and it definitely did need to come out, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like that was my emergency. Oddly enough. That wasn't what was causing the major issue. It was more just like a byproduct of it. The gastritis, I think like, that my appendix wasn't hurting me because of my, my gastritis was hurting me so much. I think that was it. Mm-hmm. Honestly. But I but we yeah, can't really so be too certain. Next time you decide to get appendicitis, let me know and I can help you out. Well, tell them to give it back first and then I'll let you know. Do you think they still have my appendix? No, they definitely throw that stuff out. What I do actually do don't know with? what they do with that stuff. I'm gonna ask a surgeon one day, like, hey, what do you guys do with it when you're like done? Where does it Same go? Who's asking? What's it to you? <laughs> oh, what floor of the hospital do we like get rid of those? <laughs> yeah, what, uh, what? Where's the dumpster you put all the you know excess body parts in? Cause yeah, they have to do something with it. Maybe they burn it. Buy. Bio- I don't know. Biohazard waste. I don't know what you would do with straight up human organs. <laughs> Yeah, like you can't, cause you can't reuse that stuff unless it's like fresh, fresh. Um, I I asked I for my uh, appendix, but they said they couldn't do that. Did you really? Who'd you ask, and what they say? I asked my surgeon before, like I went in, and like I think like when she said I was definitely gonna have surgery, I was like, do you think I could have it after? And she's like, no, we, unfortunately, we can't do that. <laughs> In, in her thick Russian accent. I would have walked out saying, you're not going to give me my problem. You're not get taking my appendix. You want to see me walk away with my appendix right now? <laughs> me and my appendix are walking out that door. And flamed and all. Yeah. Two out of ten. Wouldn't do it again. Oh. Uh. Hello. I still have all my body parts. I haven't gotten any surgery yet. Do you still have your wisdom teeth too? I don't have wisdom teeth. Oh what? Mm-hmm. 
because I a couple of years ago, maybe like two years ago, I remember saying to like my dentist, like, hey, a bunch of people my age are like have gotten their wisdom teeth out or are getting them out. Yeah. And I don't feel any pain. Can you just like, do I have them? And I'm like, let's see, let's do some x-rays. And they did. And they're like, you don't have any wisdom teeth. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> see you never. I think they've been, I think they're fibbing you. No, that's a thing. You can be, that is a thing. You can be born without wisdom teeth. Yeah, you can also, your mouth can also just be big enough. Like, that's my dad's case. He, he doesn't need his wisdom teeth out because his mouth is just big enough, I guess. But yeah, I, I got my wisdom teeth out and I got my appendix taken out. Bet I'll just get my tonsils taken out. Just do a clean sweep. You have gotten your tonsils out or you're waiting for it? No. I'll, I'll probably need them out, <laughs> just knowing me. What else? What else do you get out? What else can I possibly like, get taken uh, out? Uh, essential gallbladder. Organ. I mean, you can get a lung taken out. You'll, you'll be moderately. Oh, okay. we're go- we're going that far. So I need at least half my liver taken. Then uh, a kidney, some of my large intestine. A kidney can go. One ovary. Some intestines, some of your stomach. Yeah, one ovary. I mean, if you want to go all the way, you can just get the entire intestines out and just get a, um, an ostomy bag. Oh, a, b- a bag. Let's just yeah. cut out my esophagus so I have a hole in my throat too. A stoma. There you go. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Get it rid of it all. Take my eyes. Don't need them. Tongue. Don't need them. Teeth. Don't need them. Hey, here's a fun fact. You get a lot of the human body taken out here's a f- and still not. <laughs> here's a fun fact. Did you know George Washington's teeth were most likely that of slaves? What do you mean? Like he took a slave's teeth and put them in his mouth? Yeah. I kind of messed up. <laughs> that was the state of the world at the time. Speaking of messed up and slavery, Joe Biden won the election. <laughs> and did you actually, yes. Do you know how he won Georgia? Yeah. The Because of slavery? <laughs> like, act, excuse you? Actually. No, not directly, but okay. So, so if you look at like the demog- like the heat map, political heat map of the voting, county by county, you'll see a blue streak uh, through the South, the Deep South, with red states usually. But that is known as the uh, the Black Belt, the Black Soil Belt, uh, and it's basically just really really fertile land that was uh, good for growing cotton. So way back in the olden days, a lot, a lot of slave plantations were there, and their families to this day are still in those counties. So they heavily, heavily influenced the vote in those states. So heavy to the point that Joe Biden actually won Georgia because of voting in these mostly black counties. So man, that show, that, that this election was wild. As that's like literally like I was. That was like the definition of poetic justice right there. <laughs> Trump losing because of... I was of, uh, glued to my phone for four days. Just like, okay, do we have a president? Yeah, I know. I, I kept I kept refreshing and it was... I've never... I've asked my parents. Like, they've... My dad's voted in every election since uh, Carter, at least. And he, he's like, I've never seen an election like this. Never, ever. Absolutely mm-hmm. bonkers. It was wild because, like, there's just so much on the line. <laughs> My favorite part, though, Will is... Will you shut up, man? How come all these mail-in votes are for uh, Biden? Kind of suspicious, eh? Guy, you've been preaching don't do mail-in ballots for, like, months. Yes, the... Why would they do mail-in ballots? Hey, hey, him to his people. Mail-in is a, is a fraud. Don't send your votes by mail-in. Him after the election. Wait, why didn't I get any mail-in ballots? What's going on? Um, I've got to pull up It's so funny. There was one tweet because, like, CNN just, like... It, there was just a bunch of CNN headlines. Yeah, without any evidence, that were just Trump wild. feels like he's being cheated. <laughs> Trump says he'll go to the go to Supreme Court. Unclear why. <laughs> without any evidence, Trump says he's being yep. cheated. Trump complains that mail-in votes are being counted. <laughs> like it's it's not that hard. That to is the out. world. Like that is real. It's not like fake. It feels fake. Mm-hmm. This feels like it's out of a movie. Pandemic president that's like kind of senile for the past four years it's felt like ashton kutcher's gonna come out and be like oh you're unpunked <laughs> you uh, you've just been kicked in the nuts that's a reference <laughs> uh but yeah it's hey 
I was able to take a deep breath of relief when I found out it was very that uh, Biden was elected. It was very, very relieving to not have a... Well, I mean, he, it's just good to, to have a president who's... Well, he's not president yet, but it's good to have somebody who's going to be president who isn't, like, going to divide the country, or at least not go, going to actively try to divide the country. I'm just happy to have a politician back in the I don't White know House. about that. I, don't, I still don't think we need a politician if we want to get things done, but I think having somebody who's inoffensive opposed to somebody who's offensive is far better. I don't want to be able to look, because I looked it up today. I was able to search into YouTube, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Stone Cold Stunner on Donald Trump, and that is a real thing you can watch today. <laughs> I don't want a president that I can look that up. <laughs> You think Obama's taking a stone cold stunner? Come oh on. Oh my god. <laughs> that killed me. And you know what he did right afterwards? Man chugged a beer. Yeah. Not Trump. Stone cold. Because, like, it, that's. Austin 316 says I kicked your ass. That's what you do. <laughs> Austin 316 says I kicked your ass and drank a beer in your face. <laughs> God, I missed that era. Yeah, I think, like, I don't know. It was just... I, it was just a weird time. It was going to be a weird blip in American history. I don't, I want, I'm want. i interested to see how they teach it for the next generation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm thankful to not be on the wrong side of history with that one. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I should use it as to say, I've been seeing, like, some old friends that, like, share his post or whatever, saying, like, this is rigged or whatever. And I will say, it makes me think a little less of them. I know that's not the right response, but... But it's just like, I don't know, how, how can like Trump supporters, of all people, like sc- say, like scream like wolf about an uh, el- election being rigged when like this literally been proven that Russia had hands in the 2016 election? And like nothing was done about that. That's like the argument I've been saying, like, uh, the left has believes that Russia interfered with the election, but that mail-in voting is um, uh, can't be tampered with. Yeah, it's like I'm not saying it can't be tampered with, but I'm also saying that he won the popular vote by a historic uh, margin. Is it really like that crazy of a thought to think that the most unpopular president in U.S. history can lose re-election? Is that crazy to think? I don't know. I <laughs> like. The man went for impeachment. The man lost the popular vote twice. Is that rude? And he's a single-term president. But it's still unfathomable Yeah. that he could have lost this election. No, it's just, I don't know. I don't see that. It's crazy how close it was. It sh- to me, it shouldn't have been that close at all. Like, It really shouldn't have. I will say seeing Texas as a blue state for like that moment in history gave me hope for the world. Yeah, and seeing Georgia as blue now. Mm-hmm. It's crazy that, like states that haven't been blue since 1960 are all of a sudden blue yeah yeah literally crazy crazy times just in 2020 do you think like (laughs) something new every every month also we're getting a dog back in the white house oh hell yeah yeah trump trump is the first one to not have a dog since the tradition did you see that biden video that he put out about the dogs uh, I did not see the video. Oh, I know one's a rescue. You should... You, okay, let me see if I can and try and find that video after the show because it's like, um... He, like, goes back through all the old presidents, like, since, like, Reagan. Like, all of them had dogs. And he, like, cuts, like, a Trump speech where he's talking about, like, how would I look with a dog? Like, walking a dog. He's, like, making fun of, like, presidents who had dogs. And then he's, like, uh... He made the connection. He's, like, be careful about what human you choose. Like something along those lines, but it's like it's like a really really good video. I was like, damn, Biden really earned my vote with this one. Biden's marketing team has been nailing it. It's not very um, hard to to come up with material against Trump, though. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the photo going around of uh, him and his wife that says "Doctor" and and then like they're covering the yeah. word "vice," Doctor and President Biden yeah. or whatever. It's a flex. He's wearing a hat that says "We did." Yeah, and then it says like Biden forty six in response to make America great again. And, like, that's really clever. Yeah. Good for you guys. Yeah. No, like, that's quite a flex to be uh, 
vice president and president. Mm -hmm. Quite a flex. Um, and then we have our first not white old man vice president. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and if, which I think that's a bigger deal. If Biden, if Biden dies, I wouldn't be upset if Kamala Harris was president. Honestly, I think she's, I will be honest. I do not know what she stands for. I do not know her stance on most political issues. Um, I don't like the, the fact that she but, was a DA and, and sent people away for marijuana related crimes, but I mean, mm -hmm. she had to do her job. I will say we all learned from our mistakes. She had to do her job. Like if that's just kind of like, yeah, if that's what happened back then, that's what happened back then. Yeah. It's now kind of not a thing anymore. Like we all learn and grow. And if you don't learn and grow, you, you, you get voted out. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think this country shames too much on like changing your opinion through education yeah or or it's like well you got to believe this and if you change your belief you're weak it's like no you learned you live and you learn or if you or on the opposite end of the spectrum you can't change at all and then we have cancel culture where if uh some person like it but like in terms of like trump supporters like if you're a trump supporter like to a lot of like my liberal friends like you're just x'd out you're cut out Mm -hmm. Like to a certain extent, so it's like I forgot where I was going. But that's like not what we need to do. <laughs> can, mm -hmm. I can't keep reading what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, first I didn't know she was African American to be honest, but uh, first you African didn't? American. Um, no, I I remember. Th I don't know what she was, but I didn't assume. Uh, I did not assume black. When that was like. It was predicted that Biden was going to pick uh, an African-American female for his running mate. <laughs> it's just so interesting to see, like, the photos of all the vice presidents lined up and then just a picture of her. It's like, wow, it seems like we should have gotten to here a little sooner. Yeah. Yeah, right? But, I mean, better, better now than never. Just wait. 2024, we're going to have a black man in the Oval Office again. Kanye first West. Lady Kardashian. Kanye West. <laughs> My man. Did you see... Um, he got actually, like, amounts of votes. He he got better votes than some of the actual politicians going for different parties. <laughs> yeah. That's probably just, like, because people, like, wanted to, like, reply to him on Twitter, like... A picture of their ballot saying, look, Kanye, I voted for you. <laughs> that was like a thing. Like, everyone was tweeting pictures of their ballots. I, back in my day, I remember a time when you didn't tell people who you voted for. Wasn't that, yeah, like, the pol thing? Politics is very taboo. I remember, like, that being a thing in grade school. Like, when learning about voting, they're like, you don't tell people who you vote for. Mm -hmm. It's secret. It's not really a matter you're supposed to discuss. I don't know why that's it was only like, something considered like behind the closed door conversation. Politics is something you're only supposed to bring up at the family dinner table. I save it for Thanksgiving. Yeah, I save it for Christmas. I save it for when my racist grandpa's around. How is he, by the way? Oh, um, all my grandpas are dead. <laughs> so damn. Yeah, well, I didn't have any racist grandparents, so riddle me that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm of pure blood. I bet you had some real racist grandparents, Mr. Gomez. <laughs> when he describes himself as not racist, but then also describes himself as pure blood. Yeah, I'm real pure blood. You're just a mutt, Mr. Hundred Percent Hispanic. <laughs> yep. Um. Yep. Yeah, you know. You got any other topics to talk about? Uh, my my, right my like headphones just unplugged themselves again. Forty minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's about all that's going on with me right now. I got. You, uh, you want to plug them back in and we can send this off? Yeah, well, hopefully they don't die. Let me know when they're in. Is it in yet? What do you say? Huh? Hello. Hello? So, I, <laughs> are your headphones? Yeah, good? I I got the headphones on a portable battery right now. It looks kind of funny. <laughs> gotcha. All right, well, thank you for listening to this week's edition of uh, Space Show. Thank you for exercising your right to vote. If yeah. You did. If not, there's thank always... Thank you for not letting uh, us down as a country. Election. Uh, that's a message to the general public. Your vote does mean something. Oh, God, I can tell I'm unplugged.
God! A lot of counties came down. So... What? Yeah, just, what? You just gotta close it because my headphones died. Okay, I got this. Okay, Bye, yeah, people. A lot, uh, a lot of counties came down to like uh, very few votes. So it does matter. Your voice does matter. Uh, please wear a mask. If you don't, my job gets harder and we don't get out of this situation any faster. Um, buy our merch. Please subscribe. Be sure to follow on Instagram. And yeah.